All right, so let's look at number seven here, um, where we're going to look at how we derive the output demand curve and try to understand what affects the slope of that output demand curve. So they have a relatively steep slope or a relatively flat slope. And so uh, we've got several options here, A, B, and C. Uh, and so we'll start in with, with part A and try to go back through how we get the aggregate demand curve and how that affects uh, the slope of the aggregate demand curve. So this is, is number seven, part A. And so how did we get the aggregate demand curve or output demand curve? Well, as we started here, I'm going to try to draw this big enough that we can see my changes. We started with this graph that took our actual income, y, on the horizontal axis. So this is our income, which is the same as real GDP. And then we were plotting our output demand on the vertical axis. How much real GDP do we demand given that income? That relationship came from the fact that our consumption increases as our income increases. And the rate at which that happens was the marginal propensity to consume. So let me draw the key parts here. So here's the 45 degree line. And along that line, income and output demanded are exactly the same. So we're looking for a point on that line where my plans to buy output are consistent with my income. And so what we did was we had Our output demand was consumption demand at a real interest rate plus investment demand at the real interest rate plus government spending. That is output demand. Sorry, you can't see it. There we go. And so where those two met told me what's my output demand going to be at that real interest rate R1. And so if I take that down then, to real GDP and the real interest rate. At R1, I know how much real GDP we demand. That's Y1. And then the game is to, as I change the real interest rate, that's going to shift my output demand up here, um, up and down. So let me kind of go to a slightly different color here. So when the real interest rate goes down, so let's say I decrease that real interest rate to R2, that's going to increase consumption demand and increase investment demand. So when R goes down, we want to consume more in the current period, right? I don't, I don't want to save as, as much or I'm willing to borrow more to get more consumption today. And firms are going to invest more when the real interest rate goes down. So what that does is it shifts up this curve. So this is CD of R2 plus ID of R2 plus G. So both consumption and investment go up when that real interest rate goes down. And that leads me to this Y2. And so if I take that down, here's Y2 at the lower real interest rate, remember. So I'm gonna switch back here this color. That was when I decreased the interest rate to R2. And so here's my output demand curve. And I call that YD1. So that's where it came from. I changed the interest rate and that's going to shift uh, output demand up and down. And that traces out this decreasing relationship between the real interest rate and output demand. Lower real interest rate, we want more output to consume uh, for consumption or investment. Now, where does the marginal propensity to consume come into this? Well, that's the slope 
of this curve, remember. So the slope here, change in C over the change in Y, is my marginal propensity to consume. So when that gets steeper, that is going to cause bigger changes in Y in response to a change in the interest rate. So I'm not sure if I can, if I can totally draw. Let me try to draw it on this graph, um, and we'll, we'll hope for the best here. Um, so if I draw a steeper version that kind of comes through in the same place, All right, so that's, uh, I'm going to call this YD of R1 for the steeper version. So you can see there that for every given change in Y, my output demand or consumption demand is going to increase faster. That's a steeper slope, a higher marginal propensity to consume. So now what happens when I increase the interest rate, so if I do a similar change in the interest rate, so I kind of go from about uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 up, 1, 2, 3, 4 up, and I maintain that kind of same slope. R2. What we see is that we get a bigger change in Y in response to the same change in the interest rate. Right, so I didn't change how big the increase in consumption and investment are, but I did change the slope. And that meant that we get a bigger change in output demanded in response to a change in the interest rate. And so if I bring that down here, we're going to get a flatter aggregate demand curve. Right, so the higher the marginal propensity to consume, the flatter the aggregate demand curve or output demand curve is going to be because we get a, a, a larger increase in output in response to a change in the interest rate. All right, now that one, that one is, a, is a little bit more complicated. It's, it's much harder to see. You're gonna have to just stare at the graph long enough and practice this on your own to make sure that that makes sense. Now, in part B, and C. They're really basically the same, they're just going in opposite directions. All we're doing there is changing how big that shift in our output demand is. So in uh, part B, uh, we're making the shift bigger, I think, and in part C, we're making the shift smaller. Double check here. So yes, so the intertemporal substitution effect of the real interest rate on current consumption increases, and in part C, investment is less responsive to the real interest rate. So what we're doing in part B is these things shifts more when R changes. And in part C, we're saying it shifts less when R changes. And Therefore, in part B, we're going to get a bigger change in Y when R changes, and that's going to lead to a flatter aggregate demand curve than if we had a faster change. So we can basically answer both questions uh, with, with one fail swoop here. So I'm going to draw the income output demand relationship, 45 degree line. And that's going to get us one point, an R1 and a Y1. Okay. 
and then what we did was we shifted that around. So when we decrease R, so we go to R2, I basically want to know how much is output going to increase. And so we could have a really big change, which is what part B is saying. Consumption responds more to a change in the interest rate. So I will draw that one in green. So if I get a big response, I'm going to get a much bigger change here in Y. Sorry for my, uh, sorry for my sloppy uh, writing there, which is going to lead to a much flatter aggregate demand curve. Call that YD1 when we have big changes in response to the interest rate. Now, if I have a smaller change in part C, I will draw that in blue. So if investment is less responsive to a change in the real interest rate or consumption is less responsive, either one is less responsive, uh, I'm going to get a smaller increase in Y. And that's going to imply the aggregate demand curve is much steeper. YD2. So the bigger the response, the flatter the aggregate demand curve. The smaller the response, um, the steeper the aggregate demand curve is. And that was, that was also true in, in Part A. So really all three questions uh, were kind of getting at the the same idea, just uh, all the different vehicles that could generate those things. All right, so this is a tough problem as well. Uh, so was the one before. So take your time on these. Really spend the time to draw these out on your own and derive these aggregate demand curves. And if you do that, you take my advice and do that, spend the, spend the extra time to get it right, uh, the other questions are going to seem much easier.